In this video, we're going to learn how to implement method chaining in C++. So first off, what is method chaining? Let's say we have an object like this, some kind of object type here, and then we've made object one. We can call methods of the object like this, object one dot method one, object one dot method two, object one dot method three, and so on. But with this approach, we repeat the identifier object one three times. Method chaining allows us to call the methods like this, object one dot method one dot method two dot method three. So object one is no longer repeated and we can read from left to right, just as how text is read in many different languages. So it's actually a bit of a debate as to whether method chaining is actually worth it or not. I'll post a link in the comments to a research paper on this topic, but it seems like in situations where we have chains of methods that act on the object, for example, setter methods, that it seems to be beneficial. It's used extensively in jQuery, a very popular JavaScript library, but I will say it's debatable. It's something where programmers argue about this and people might be right, people might be wrong. There's probably certain situations where method chaining is useful. So let's implement method chaining now. The first thing we'll do is make a basic rectangle class. We'll say here class rectangle and our rectangles are gonna have some public member variables, length, width, and a color. And then we'll make a constructor to build our rectangle objects. So the constructor will accept a length and a width and a color. And we're gonna set these member variables based on the arguments provided to the constructor. So we'll set length to set length, we'll set width to set width, and we'll set color to set color. And then we'll make a print function so we can print out the rectangle details. We'll say void print, and the print method is going to output the length and the width and the color. So output the length, output the width, and then we'll also output the color. And then we'll try making a rectangle object and just make sure these methods work. And then after that, we'll try to implement method chaining. So we'll say color here and then in line. Okay, so let's make a rectangle object and try to print it. So in the main function, we'll say rectangle, rectangle one, and we'll say four, five, and red. And then we'll call rectangle one's print function. So we'll save and run our program and we'll get a red rectangle of length four and width five. So now that we've defined a basic object type here, let's implement method chaining. To implement method chaining, we'll make a series of setter methods because that's a typical use case for method chaining. And the whole trick to making method chaining work is we're gonna have each method return a reference to the object instance. So it's gonna look like this. Here we'll say rectangle and set color and the set color method is gonna take in a string as an argument and we'll set the color equal to that string. Now we're gonna return the object itself. So this is a pointer to the object instance for which the set color method is running. The star operator here dereferences that pointer and we return the object itself. And we're gonna be returning a reference to that object. Now we can use this method on its own. So down here, I could say rectangle one dot set color and I could say orange. And if we save and run this, it'll work fine. We'll switch the rectangle's color to orange. But with this approach, I could now chain methods like this. So we'll make other setter methods. I'll say rectangle and for a reference to a rectangle, and we'll say set length, int set length. And again, we'll set length equal to set length. And again, we're gonna return the object itself. 
in the same way as before. Now I can actually say dot set length here. And I can change the length to maybe 10. So if we save and run this, we'll change both the color and length member variables of that rectangle object. And we're doing it on one line now by chaining the methods. And it's kind of cool. So basically when we call set color, this expression here is going to return a reference to the object instance itself. Then at that point, set length is going to be called. We could also make a set width. So here we could say rectangle and set width int set width and we'll set width equal to set width. And again, we'll return a reference to the object itself. And here we could say set width. Maybe I'll say two. And we can save and run this. And now we'll find the width has also been changed. So this is how we can implement method chaining in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.